Hey, what's up guys? So today Connor and I are gonna go over some tips and tricks that we've learned throughout the years in Adobe Premiere. And these are things that I wish I would have learned early on. Now you might have noticed that Adobe has been killing it with these updates, a lot of under the hood performance upgrades. So if you guys have not seen one of my latest videos that I published about a month ago on how now they're using NVIC, which if you're not familiar with what NVIC is, it's basically NVIDIA's encoder, which means that now when you export, you have GPU acceleration. And let me tell you, it is stupid fast. Check out that video. Now, today we're gonna to talk about, again, some of our favorite tips and tricks. Now, I do wanna thank NVIDIA for sponsoring today's video, and some of these are actually GPU accelerated, which are really gonna improve your workflow. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you film something at 24 frames per second and you needed to slow it down. You needed that slow motion shot and you just wished you would have shot it at at least 60 frames per second. Well, there's a way where you can actually increase the frame rate and get that slow motion that you wanted. The way you do it first is you select the clip that you wanna slow down and then you right click and then you select speed and duration. And then from there, you need to set the speed that you wanna slow it down. In my example, we'll just say 50%. And then from here, you need to set the time interpolation to optical flow. That is very important. Now, what's gonna happen is, since we reduce it now to 50%, it is now going to generate 24 extra frames per second to create this smooth slow motion. Now, depending on what you filmed, you can even drop it down to as little as 1%, which is gonna give you this crazy slow motion and people might even think that you shot this on a high frame rate camera, which is pretty amazing. But your results may vary depending on what you film. This is a great thing that you can do that will really save you in a pinch whenever you need to slow some footage down. Hey, howdy guys, Connor McCaskill here. And as Armando mentioned, Nvidia and Adobe Premiere have partnered up to bring us a lot of really awesome GPU accelerated features. And before I get into showing you my favorite tips and tricks that I've learned over the years, let me go ahead and quickly show you a simple way to tell which effects in Premiere Pro are GPU accelerated. Alrighty guys, so once you have Adobe Premiere loaded up, it's really simple to tell which effects are GPU accelerated. I'm gonna quickly show you how to do that. So if you go down to the left hand side and click on the effects tab, the icon right below it that looks like an arrow going really fast, if I hover over that, it'll actually say accelerated effects. Pretty obvious, all you gotta do is click on it and then every single effect that is displayed below is taking full advantage of that NVIDIA GPU and you're going to get the best performance possible in Adobe Premiere Pro. So the effect that I'm gonna show you guys is actually GPU accelerated, which is really awesome. And it's something that I just found out recently. In fact, I used it in a video that I made about the Helios 44 II. If you haven't seen that video, it's actually a really cool video. I go deep dive into the history of that lens, which is really, really interesting. But basically the problem that I was running into is that I was using still images and they were just a bit boring. So. I dove into Premiere Pro and I found this effect that kind of spiced it up and it's called Basic 3D. So let me go ahead and show you how I applied it. All right, so the first thing you're going to wanna do once you have your images that you want to manipulate in your timeline is you're gonna go over to the search bar or you can just click on the GPU accelerated thing again and scroll until you find it, but it's easier just to type 3D. And there it is, under perspective, you'll see basic 3D. Go ahead and drop that onto your image. Now what this does is that it's going to turn this basic 2D image into a 3D object so that you can manipulate it in a 3D space. So you'll see under basic 3D in your effects panel that you have a few different options. The first one is swivel. So you're able to rotate this left and right, which is really handy. And then you also have tilt, which is your up and down. The great thing about this is that you're able to use keyframes so that you can animate this still image in a 3D space to make it more dynamic and interesting than just using Ken Burns, which everyone does. So let me go ahead and do that real quick so you can see what that looks like. So in order to animate, this still image is actually very simple. So let's go ahead and make sure you're on your first frame that you want to animate. And let's just swivel this to the right and then let's tilt it up like so. Make sure to enable your keyframes so that it remembers that position. Go to your last frame and then just select the opposite direction. So if I'm at negative 50, let's say I go to positive 30. And if I'm at negative 17, let's just go to positive 17. That way it animates in the opposite direction. 
And as you can see, it's much more interesting than if I had just applied a simple Ken's Burns. And something else that you may notice is that when I hit play, it is playing very, very smoothly, and that is the GPU acceleration at work. Now, one of the reasons I love using Adobe Premiere as my editing software is because of the flexible workflow and how it integrates with other Adobe programs. For instance, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a situation where you've finalized your edit, you've added some music, and then you realize that you just wish your music was maybe 30 seconds longer or even two minutes because you wanna keep that flow consistent. Well, there's a way that you can extend the song, any song, very easily. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So the first thing you wanna do is click on edit, then edit in Adobe Audition. And then from here, you wanna make sure that you select sequence. Now, automatically, Adobe Audition will seamlessly open up. And then from here, what you wanna do is select your music track that you wanna work with. Now you'll notice as soon as you select the music track on the left-hand side, there's a new option called Enable Remix. Go ahead and click on that. Now what's happening is that Adobe Audition is intelligently analyzing the song, finding out the beats per minute so that it can stretch it or make it smaller. So the next step is to go to target duration, set the length of how long you want the song to be, and then press enter. Now here's the thing, now you wanna bring that song back to Adobe Premiere so that you can work with it. So from here, make sure you select the new music track and then go to multi-track and then you wanna export that to Adobe Premiere. You wanna make sure that you select stereo as your mix down session, and then all you need to do is push on export, which will now bring your new music file over to Adobe Premiere. And then from there, Adobe's gonna ask you where you want this new music track to go. Now, personally for me, I always like to select a track where there's no audio there, just because I don't wanna destroy anything. So in my case, I'm going to select audio track number four. And then from here, it'll automatically put it there, and now I have this extended song that works perfect for my edit. So this next trick that I wanna show you guys is something that has saved me a lot of time and I like to call it a non-destructive edit. So let's just jump right into it. So this particular trick is really useful for a multi-cam edit. So as you can see, we have this top layer right here and then if I delete it, we have a bottom A roll. I'm just gonna command Z to bring that back. So typically when you're working with multi-cam edits, how people will do it is they'll have their top layer and their bottom layer and they'll be synchronized with audio and then they'll just kind of cut between them by deleting the top layer whenever they don't think that they particularly need it. So for instance, let's say that I want this shot right here to show the product and then the next shot, I want it to go back to a roll. So most people would just simply press delete and now you have a transition between the product and the a roll. The problem that I have with this is that it is a destructive edit. So if I come back later after my timeline has gotten a lot more complicated than this, it can be hard to fix it. And if I wanna bring that footage back, I have to jump back into my files, find that exact moment, resynchronize it, it's kind of a hassle. So let me show you a better way in my opinion on how to do this exact same thing. So a better way to do this, in my opinion, is by utilizing something called an enable tool. Now I have this bound to my E key. You can set that up in your keyboard shortcuts, but basically it's simple. All you have to do is, let's say I want this to be on my product just like before, and then I want it to cut back to A roll. So instead of deleting it directly, all I have to do is highlight the clip and press E. And now I'm back to my A roll. And you'll notice the clip is grayed out. It's essentially the same thing as deleting the file, however, it's not actually going anywhere. So if later I come back to my edit and I decide actually I did wanna show something off right there in the product, I can just simply press E and now it is back to normal. Similar to Photoshop where you can hide layers like in Premiere Pro where you can hit the eye icon, but instead of hiding the entire track, you're able to enable and disable individual clips. It's much more precise and flexible and the best part is, is that it is non-destructive. Now here's an effect that most people are familiar with, but I'm gonna show you guys a simple tip that can drastically improve the way you use it. Now, you guys are probably or heard of Warp Stabilizer, and what it does is it stabilizes your image. It's supposed to do that, but it doesn't always work because depending on what you film and how you shoot it, it might just create this jello effect or it might crop your image way too much. Very simple tip, all you wanna do is you set the smoothness to 1%, giving you a very smooth image without the jello effect and also massive crop. And the best part about it is that it is GPU accelerated. 
So these were some of our favorite tips and tricks that we've learned throughout the years. Let me know in the comment section which one was your favorite one. Also, I wanna thank NVIDIA for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys wanna learn more about the benefits of using an NVIDIA RTX Studio graphics card, there will be a link down below in the description. Also, make sure to check out Connor McCaskill's YouTube channel. He posts videos every week. No, I don't. <laughs> make, sure to, make sure to check him out, bug him about it. He's an awesome creator and you know he also works with me. My name is Armando, thanks again for watching and you guys will catch me in the next one. Adios.